All right, so here are five unique title animations that are quick and easy to do inside of After Effects. And for sure, they're going to get your creative juices flowing for the new year. Let's jump on in. We're starting our first title effect with the track map, a tool that's so simple yet powerful. Let me show you. So inside of After Effects, we're going to press Command T to enable the type tool. So I'm using this really cool font from Envato and I'm going to write out some text with the type tool. Then I'm going to drop in this TV noise stock footage that I got from Envato into the timeline. And down here, we'll see a track mat tab. And if you don't see it, you can press F4 to toggle modes. So what I can do here is grab the pick whip tool from the stock footage and drag it into our text layer. Now check it out. Our footage now only appears where the text is and it instantly is creating this cool text animation. So the simple tool opens up a ton of creative possibility. So let's try it with a different clip now. Of course, you can use your own footage that you filmed, but for me, I'm going to grab some noisy stock footage like this one. We can also make it look even better by creating an adjustment layer on top of everything and then adding a glow effect to it. And here's a quick tip you'll like for creating nice glows. So let's duplicate the glow effect three times. And from top to bottom, we want the glow intensity to go from high to low, while the glow radius goes from low to high. The exact number is something that you have to mess around with to make it look best with the footage that you have. And as you can see, doing this will create a pretty natural looking glow. I can also add a curves effect on top of this and adjust the luma curve to help add or reduce parts that are affected by the glows. And finally, let's add another adjustment layer and apply some noise effects to it. So noise and glow go very well together because it makes everything feel a little bit warmer and a little bit more vintage which we like. I also got this kind of weird, but colorful morphine footage. And this time before we track mat it to the text layer, I want to add the CC glass effect to it. Under effect controls, let's choose the text layer as a bump mat. And at first you won't see much of a difference, but if we bump up the displacement value, you'll start to see the shape of our text appearing on the footage. Let's solo our text layer for now and let's add rough and edges effect to it. If we mess around with the evolution value, the edge of our text will start to move. To make it constantly move, we can keyframe it or hold alt slash option, then click on the stopwatch icon to activate expressions. So now in the timeline here, we have an option to write out an expression. So let's write in time times 150. And this will make our evolution value go up by 150 every second. Now we can finally track mat the footage to the text and bam. And with some glow and noise added on top, this was looking pretty nice. You can also apply a tint effect on top of everything to make it black and white or pick another accent color of your choice. And by the way, I'm Kelsey, the creator of Premiere Gal. And as you can see from this video, we do more than just Premiere Pro. If you go to our channel page, you can click on the little search icon and search any topic like music editing to check out some cool audio effects that you can do to boost your video edits. And all of our tutorials are free thanks to our monthly patrons and sponsors. And if you wanna access the animations from this tutorial, join my Patreon, link below. All right, let's jump back in. So for our third animation, we're using the track mat tool again. See, I told you it was powerful. We're going to use it to make it look like my logo is shining a light to reveal hidden text. So let's start by grabbing the rounded rectangle tool and let's create a new shape layer. Let's go to the properties panel to increase its roundness. You can enable this panel underneath this window drop down menu. Let's add a gradient ramp to our shape to create a nice color gradient on the shape. And then let's write out gal and place it in the middle of my square and then track mat my shape layer to the text. Now let's hit this button to make a cutout. I want my gal text to reveal later. So I'll just keyframe the opacity of the text layer to make it blink into existence. And now we can pre-comp the shape and the text layer and call our pre-comp logo just for organization. 
So now we can create another text layer and place it on top of our logo. And on the logo layer, let's press P and keyframe its position to make it slowly move up from bottom of the frame. Then we'll duplicate the layer and add a Gaussian blur to it. One of you guys commented that I was pronouncing Gaussian wrong. I was saying Gaussian. Gaussian. That's the correct way. And let's bump it up a ton and track mat this layer to our top text layer. Now, if I play it, you'll see that the blurred layer is slowly revealing our text. And if it's too dark, you can add a curves effect to the logo layer to just brighten it up. Or you can even go into the last position keyframe and move it up a bit until you're happy with the text reveal. Now we can add a glow and noise to glue this all together. And I can lean into this vintage vibe by adding a slight shake to the whole thing. To do this, let's pre-comp all the layers and open up the position parameters. Now let's do an expression. Let's hold Alt or Option and we can press the stopwatch and then add the expression wiggle parentheses 12 comma 1 parentheses. This will make the layer's position change 12 times a second, but only by one pixel each time. Now, if I hit play, you'll see that what we're getting right here is a slight shake mimicking what you see on an old TV. Okay, so a quick story time. When I was first starting out as a shredder, shooter editor, I had to do everything in the production, right? I didn't have time to create these animations from scratch. To save time, what I would do is I would download After Effects templates from Envato. And by doing that, not only did I speed up and create really cool animations that impressed my clients, but I also was able to reverse engineer the templates to in turn learn how certain effects were done. And it's crazy to think about that 10 years ago I was using these templates. Little did I know that today on the channel they would be a sponsor of today's video. So when you head to their page and you go to the video template category, you can search over 100,000 different advanced animation templates and not just After Effects, many different types of software. So with an Envato subscription, I can download as many of these different title animations as I want to try out in my edit rather than just having to pay for one and test it out. Maybe it doesn't work, right? And if you're more of a beginner, a lot of these template files have a video tutorial included. So that's really helpful if you're just starting out. And a quick tip for you advanced users out there. If you open up a template and you click on this cute little shy guy button, it unhides the hidden layer so you can get more control to adjust things even further. And as I mentioned before, they have more than just templates. They have stock footage, they have tons of creative fonts, photos, sound effects, and more. And each asset that you download for a specific project comes with a commercial license that doesn't expire. Let's say if you have to cancel your subscription in the future, it remains, which is just awesome. So if you want to try out Envato, I put a link down below. Thanks to Envato for sponsoring, and let's jump into the next title effect. For this title effect, I'm going to show you a quick and dirty way to create a morphine effect. So I have my text layer already ready. So let's create a square shape over our text. Let's select both layers and press T. Let's keyframe the opacity of my text from 0 to 100 and 100 to 0 for the shape layer. This will give us a normal crossfade, right? So let's create an adjustment layer on top and add a Gaussian blur to it. Then we'll also keyframe it to start from 0 and end on zero. In the middle of the fade is where we're going to bump up the blur to the point where we can't really make out what's going on. So to make this actually look like a morph, I'm going to add in the levels effect and we're going to change the channel to alpha. So any adjustment that we do will only affect the alpha or the transparency channel of this layer. And then we can pull these little triangles closer to each other. If we bring it really close, the blur will start to look more like a shape. And that's the gist of it, really. I can give it a little bit more movement by adding turbulent displace to the adjustment layer and keyframe the amount starting from zero and peaking in the middle of the morph and then ending at zero. And then we can also use the Alt Option click on the evolution parameter. And here we can write in a time expression to get it to continuously move. 
And by the way, if you want to learn more about expressions, I recommend checking out School of Motion. They have a lot of material there that will help you learn different types of expressions to use in different situations. Now this looks pretty good, but I can also go in and change my text or even make two texts morphing into each other instead. So the only limitation is that this only works if the two shapes are roughly the same size. So if one text is longer than the other, then we'll just get some morphs coming out of thin air and it doesn't look that great. Although this could be exactly what you're going for, so feel free to experiment. All right, so for our last title animation and my personal favorite is creating this really cool vintage ghosting trail effect. Now this one is just a little bit more complicated than the others, but trust me, it's worth it. So I have my two text layers ready inside the timeline. And both of them have their own position keyframes to create this bouncing text animation. Now this is pretty boring as is, but let's pre-comp both the text layers into one and let's duplicate this pre-comp. Let's hide the top one for now and let's rename the bottom one to trail. And then let's add some echo effects to it. This effect basically plays a delayed version of the layer, creating a nice motion trail following my animation. So we can adjust the echo time here and number of echoes to get a longer trail. We can lower the decay to give the trail a nice fall off in opacity. In parts where the animation moves fast, the trail might look a little bit choppy. So I'm going to add a fast blur effect to help glue everything together. Then let's color it with the Colorama effect. And shout out to MoGraph Mill for teaching us this effect because they haven't uploaded in three years, but they have a gold mine of great stuff to go check out. So Colorama will let us apply colors following a certain parameter. First, we need to change the input phase to alpha. And if we go to the color wheel and change the preset to one of these color ramps, you'll see that the colors will be applied depending on the alpha or the opacity of our trail. So the part with 100% opacity will be the first color, while the parts that are fading away will have the second color. So let's change the color to have it go from pink to dark purple. You can add another color just by clicking on the circle. Now this is pretty nice, but if I click this button to turn on the transparency grid, you'll see that we get these really ugly dark edges. So to fix that, let's go back to Colorama and let's turn off Modify Alpha. Now if I turn off the transparency background, we'll get these ugly gray edges instead. So back in Colorama, let's turn off Composite Over Layer. And now it finally looks clean. Now we can move on to the ghost scene effect. Now I just want to set the tone here that you may be watching this and be like, well, how am I supposed to remember all these different steps, right? Well, oftentimes as creators, when we're creating these effects, it's a lot of playing around with effects until you get that effect that you want. We of course did a lot of trial and error and we're just mapping out the steps that we took. We're just showing you what we have learned so that way you can go off and explore and create your own great effects. All right, so time for the ghost scene effect. So let's duplicate the trail layer that we have and let's hide the top one for now. Let's rename the bottom one just to keep things organized. And on this layer, let's adjust a few things. The echo time, the echo numbers, and decay to get a longer trail that will stay on screen a bit longer. So it's a bit bright right now, so let's lower the starting intensity by a lot. And if we re-enable all the layers, this is what we get. Ah, oh, silly me, of course I forgot to add the glow and the noise. Duh. And now we're talking. I can take it to the next level by going down to the glow adjustment layer. And under the first glow effect, let's add a wiggle expression on the glow intensity to make the glow slightly flicker throughout to give it more of a vintage feel. If you're gonna take one big lesson from this video, it's that adding noise and glow can make everything look a heck of a lot better. If you wanna learn more, about After Effects, you can click right over here to check out other After Effects tutorials, and you can click up here to check out some of our gal merch. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and as always, keep creating better video with gal. See you next time. Bye. I can't reach it. Oh, and if you're still here, I'm traveling. This is why I have the makeshift studio here. I just wanted to take a second to thank you all for a fantastic 2024 on the channel. We learned a lot together 
and it's just been so wild to explore all the new tools that are coming out in the video world. And I'm just excited to, to keep creating for 2024 and continue to grow this uh, channel together. All right. Thanks guys.